Well, we've got a different type ball club, I think, now than uh, we did in 1964 when I first came up, and that was the last year that we won the pennant. But uh, we have a real pretty young ball club. The, the guys that we have to depend on, guys like Roy White, Bobby Mercer, the, the big hitters in our lineup, Ronnie Bloomberg, and uh, they're, they're all young with uh, quite a bit of experience. And so we feel like we have a young ball club and a ball club that's going to be very shortly, I think, right back on top of the American League. I think main thing, main thing I'm gonna have to work on is probably be my hitting. It's uh, not as good as it should be, but uh, I hope I get to work it out pretty soon. That's strange. Everyone's always called Dave Chalk the hitter. Well, uh, I think uh, my, I haven't been hitting the ball real sharp lately, and I've been trying to pull everything. In big leagues, you can't pull everything. You got to go with pitches and hit the right field. What kind of chance does Texas have in this College World Series? We got as good a chance as anybody up there. I think. Uh, we should we have we should be able to win if we get uh, do our just play our kind of baseball. It's the main problem. Hey Dave, when will you actually go and talk with the California Angels? I think uh, as soon as I get finished with Omaha is when I will. Do you expect any problems in negotiations with them? I wouldn't know. I don't know right now. And is there any other position that you might would like to play or could play if asked? Yeah, I could play uh, second base. I enjoy second base, and I've played it for two summers. And uh, this will probably be the place I will be playing. I'm not sure. You expect to make the majors as fast as your former teammate, Bert Hooten? I doubt it. I had read about cross-country trips on bicycle and I had originally planned to go cross-country uh, to Florida and on up the East Coast, but I uh, wasn't able to make the full plans. The Expo 72 is being advertised as something historic happening. Do you expect so? I believe so. I think that this will be the largest gathering of uh, Christians there's ever been that I know of anyway and uh, I think this will really have a life-changing effect on the people there and the people around and the people that uh, will be talked to afterwards. I can understand the assumption that, uh, that this is an answer to the Wax Museum going to Grand Prairie, but I think I'd give you this, the same answer that I, uh, that I always give. Dallas stands on its own two feet, and so does the State Fair of Texas stand on its two feet. Uh, and so does Grand Prairie's uh, attractions stand on theirs. I don't think there's any reason for, uh, for one taking from the other. Or, uh, you know, we're both very strong, and uh, we both contribute to each other. The people in charge of security at the National Governors Conference kept remembering what happened to one governor whose seat was vacant, George Wallace. As a result, if you didn't have an official badge, you were nowhere the first half of this week at the conference. Even newsmen who are sort of accustomed to coming and going at will were checked through carefully and had to show valid and up-to-date press credentials. At least one newsman covered the four-day conference from the street outside the Shamrock Hilton because his press pass had expired. The whole thing includes Texas Rangers, Department of Public Safety officers, Harris County deputies, and the Houston Police Department. The operation is run from a complete command post on the third floor of the Shamrock, where senior officers can stay in constant touch with anything going on anywhere in the hotel. All entrances and exits to the conference are bottlenecks. 
People going in had to pass by a table manned by officers where credentials were carefully inspected. Of course, nothing did happen during the conference. Nothing was even threatened. But officials were constantly aware that a vice president and two presidential candidates were there at one time or another, and that the chief executives of virtually all the U.S. states and territories were all in one room at the same time for four days. We'll probably never know whether the precautions were necessary or not, and the officers would just as soon not talk about it. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News, on the move. The students you're watching are the 27 members of the first annual bagpipe school here at Highland Park High School. They're under the direction of one of the foremost pipers of the world. His name is Seamus McNeil, and he's the piping instructor for the University of Glasgow. It's not an easy instrument to play, as I found out today. These people will be decked out this way until the school ends on Sunday afternoon. You know, one of the questions I was always asked, what do you wear under a kilt? Well, to me, I don't know about anybody else, but I wear another kilt under there. Time now to join the troops. I had my first lesson today. Jerry Park. Channel 8 News on the move. At Highland Park High School.
Mr. Burke, what is your reaction to the judge's decision today? Wait and see to see what happens after this. Um, I think what she did was a just thing, but uh, I'll have to wait. In your closing argument, you got on to the sheriff and the commissioners for talking to the press. How do you feel right now? Well, I, I am not commenting on anything that did not happen today, and I'm not going to comment. Uh, ethical requirements of the American Bar Association say I cannot comment, and I'm not going to. What I'm doing now is not within those provisions. Well, this is just an electrical device. In the early days, it was snake oil, linen, and lotion. Then when electricity was discovered, the charlatans started to sell these electrical devices. This will heat up a little bit and vibrate, but it's worthless in the treatment of arthritis or any other disease. And then when we had the radioactive era in World War II, we had the radioactive pads. And uh, these are supposedly the cures for arthritis. Then when we were talking about desalting the ocean, we had concentrated ocean water. That's supposedly the cure. And then we have the copper bracelet. Today we have moon dust as supposedly the cure for arthritis. Before you got so smart, were you ever built by one of these things? Well, yes. Uh, arthritis struck me 32 years ago. I was in bed nearly eight years, and I spent more than $3,500 on worthless quack remedies and nostrums, not because I was dumb, just because I was desperate. And people in pain, and arthritis can be very painful, people in pain are sitting ducks for the quack. And also, arthritis is not a killer. It just makes our people wish they were dead many, many times. The proceedings of a grand jury are carefully protected, as well they should be, so it's not easy to determine with certainty what has been going on behind these walls. 
but some facts are evident even to the casual observer. District Attorney-elect Tim Curry said during his campaign that he had given the grand jury evidence that persons involved deeply with drugs and narcotics had been arrested. A valid case had been made against them by police, but that the cases had never gotten to the grand jury until Curry himself uncovered and delivered them. Curry implied strongly that not only should those who had been arrested be prosecuted, but that the public officials and their associates who apparently were involved in some form of misconduct should be called to task as well. The two names most frequently called have been those of Doug Crouch and his law partner Frank Coffey. A third fact, which is obvious and must be pertinent, it doesn't take the better part of three days to present evidence to a grand jury on a normal drug possession case. Special counsel to the grand jury, Crime Commissioner Edwin Phillips, would say only that he had presented about 60% of the information he intended for the grand jury to hear and that he hoped to complete his presentation next Thursday. Pressed a bit further by telephone this afternoon, Phillips told me, I believe that due process of law is being pursued and that the grand jury is being given the information it needs to make its deliberations meaningful.